My name is Hugh Mchali. I am from South Africa. I am the CEO, the businessman, and by profession, I am an analytical chemist. And next to me is uh, Norma Temba Gubega, who is uh, my business partner. One of my businesses uh, is in the manufacturing of uh, healthcare products. Uh, in, in South Africa, it's one of the most important uh, products where we supply the government uh, of South Africa. The business has been around for more than 20 years. At some stage, uh, about 10 years ago, we started experiencing some issues you know, in the business. The business uh, uh, had financial challenges. We then had uh, some attacks. Uh, through those attacks, we thought, what is going wrong? Um, we then uh, called upon other uh, third-party agencies to come over and test our product to see if is there anything wrong or is, you know, what is it that we can improve. But then we found out that there's nothing wrong with our product. Um, I then tried to speak to some influential people to see what kind of intervention that they can bring into this whole you know, challenge that we're facing. Um, our business um, appointed about more than 200 people, and most of whom are you know, uh, black, black women, unemployed people. So we thought, let's take them from um, you know, uh, poverty, unemployment, to give them uh, jobs, you know, decent jobs. Um, but then when we started uh, getting those challenges, you know, we thought because we are unable to sell the product because it cannot be uh, approved you know, as, as, uh, uh, to be tested. Um, we then went to get some uh, funding debt uh, from a bank you know, in South Africa. Um, and then uh, at some stage, this attack led that we couldn't uh, service the debt. You know, so we were getting into uh, uh, problems. Um, you know, it, it just went on and on and on, and it really affected me big time. At some stage, um, we were coming from uh, a place, you know, in, uh, in Pumalanga. I then uh, found out that my BP, you know, blood pressure was going very, very high. So that is the stress that the business had, you know, on me, you know, personally. So I was hospitalized for about a week. I mean, my blood pressure was at about, say, 220. You know, that was on, like, on the point of you know, having a stroke, uh, basically. So um, you know, then we had the help from the bank, uh, but then we started uh, being unable you know, to service you know, the debt. Uh, we tried everything. We tried, we tried, we tried everything humanly possible. Um, uh, my colleague you know, next to me you know, kept on telling me about Emmanuel TV, Emmanuel TV, uh, try Emmanuel TV, you know, pray along with uh, the prophet, you know, TV Joshua, as I then said, okay, I will give it a try, you know, at, at some time. Um, and then uh, the bank sent us these uh, papers, you know, uh, letters of demand, meaning that they want their money, otherwise, you know, you're going to get into trouble. It stressed my wife, you know, Naomi, you know, big time. And then we were about to undertake this trip um, to overseas, to New York, where my daughter was studying. At some stage, she wanted to cancel the trip um, to say, how are we going to travel whilst we are, you know, we are banning? Because, you know, she was like, um, we don't want our houses, our properties, you know, to be repossessed, you know. So I said, okay, we'll make a plan. We'll make a plan. Then I took up the advice from uh, my business partner, um, to say, just pray along, you know, pray along with uh, the prophet T.B. Joshua, um, you know, when he prompts you to touch the screen. So what I then did, I took those papers uh, from the bank. Uh, as he was uh, prompting us, you know, to pray along, uh, I took those papers, I put them onto the screen. Um, I mean, the debt, the debt was millions and millions and millions of rents, big millions. So I put those papers on the screen. The papers from the bank? From the bank. I mean, those are letters of demand. I mean, it's no game. Put them along, and then I prayed along. As I put my 
papers uh, on the screen. You know, I felt this, you know, felt some energy, you know. You felt? Energy. I will, I will put it in the human language. All right? So that is obviously the power of God. It happened. And I put the papers away. My wife, you know, kept on saying, why are we going? You know, why are we going? Uh, we left, you know, and uh, I, I would say to her, you know what, things will be all right, you know, uh, things will be all right, you know, um, don't be afraid. Or nine days later, so we are overseas now, I saw on my emails, I saw this email letter from the bank. I read it once, I read it twice. I read it thrice. It kept on saying the same thing. The debt has been cancelled. I said, no, it can't be. Shall we put our hands together for her Lord Jesus? Then after that, because I, I wouldn't show my wife something that I was not sure about, you know, because then I would get a, a smack. I then was um, strong enough in my resolve to show it to my wife to say, I didn't want... I didn't want to even talk or say anything. I just showed her the letter. She read it. She cried. She said, is it real? I said, well, that's what it says. So she read it again. I then thought, okay, let me phone uh, our business partners back in South Africa to say, are we on the same page? Are you reading what I'm reading? Then they said, um, you, we've been looking for you for this. Basically, what that letter says, is it said, debt has been cancelled, you've got one day to sign to agree whether you want your debt to be cancelled or not. Number one. Number two, it said, you have been selected to qualify for a certain program, which I never applied for. So... So I was hit with two miracles at the same time. I, of course, I signed it off immediately. I signed it off immediately, and I sent it back to South Africa. We checked if that uh, letter was uh, authentic. Yes, it was authentic. We uh, spoke to the bank. The bank said, we've been waiting for your signature. So I thought it's highly imperative for me. This is my first time here at Squan, to share this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful testimony. I wouldn't have hidden it because you don't hide things from God. It will be a travesty. Uh, I, do, I want those blessings from God. So I tested him, and he intervened at the right time. So it shows that God's timing was perfect because during that trip, it was traumatic. I, I kept a, 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 a brave face, you know, to my wife to say, it's going to be fine. Although it, I felt something, you know, worry, but I had that belief that, you know, give God a chance. So the debt is zero. So I'm here to give this testimony to the wonderful people. Give God a chance at all times. Trust in him. He is the biggest intervention strategy, plan, you may, whatever you may call it. Whether you are CEO, whether you are a chairman, whether you are, you are experienced in business, 100 years, you've, whatever you are, trust in the living God. Give him a chance and he will come through for you. Once again, let us put our hands together for her Lord Jesus. Yes, indeed, it is obvious that after her brothers have exhausted all our mental and emotional resources, he definitely have to trust on someone who is smarter, stronger, and wiser, which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And today we can see the evidence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who had indeed transformed not only your life and your business at large. We thank God for your life. And we just want to tell you, the Lord God Almighty has done this uh, wonderful thing for you. Continue to honor him. 
follow him and receive instruction from him. And we pray that God Almighty will give you a grace to be a good leader in Jesus' name. Once Amen. again, let us put our hands together for our Lord Jesus.